So Phillips uh, grew up in a small country town uh, called Taree. Um, it was a nice place, uh, mid north coast of New South Wales, uh, yeah, on a on a big river, very close to the coast. Um, it felt a lot smaller than it probably was, <laughs> to me anyway. It did. Uh, it was a very innocent place to grow up into. Um, you know, you could just you go out and you you go out and ride your bike to your friend's place and you'd go and play. And just so long as you were home, you know, before the sun went down, uh, everything was quite good. Um, you're also very insulated in a lot of respects from uh, the rest of the world and what was happening, you didn't know much about it. Um, <clears throat> there were these great open you know, pastures and woodlands and things that you could go and enjoy and, and do. So it was pretty much an outdoor lifestyle uh, in that respect. Um, but I knew something there too I wanted to... I knew there was more to life than this and I always had this, I guess, this feeling, this yearning of, of wanting to get out and... Um, explore the rest of the world and see what it was like and not believing that it just could be this. So I went through, um, you know, a small country town schools. Um, there was, my classes were small, there wasn't too many people in them, um, you know, relative to, I guess, other places and what's around today. Um, it was interesting, I know right towards the very end they introduced this concept of a careers advisor and I mean, you know, he didn't really know too much at all. So my dad was very hands-on. He, he was a tradesman um, and he worked as a, an electrician, so he was very a very hands-on guy too. He was always working down in his shed, building something, you know, fixing something. So, you know, as a young boy, I would be down there, you know, getting exposure to that. Um, at school, I found out, you know, I was very strong in the maths and science, so I enjoyed that. I enjoyed learning that sort of things about the world around you and, and what drove it physically. And I guess then it was a combination, I suppose. You know, when the big question comes, what are you going to do? Um, I was never someone who went, I knew, yes, from an early age, this is exactly what I'm going to do, and, and did that, you know, it was, oh heck, what am I going to do? You know, this is a big question. Um, but I guess I just fell into engineering from, you know, my background and, and where my academic strengths were. I was never a person who sat there and went, yes, I'm going to be CEO one day and yes, I'm going to do this or that. Um, I, I, as a young boy, I was not a, a leader as such. I was, I was pretty shy and quiet. Um, I get, it came out in me more so because I was a person who could see, I guess, a better way to do something. Um, I was a person who'd get easily frustrated if if it wasn't, you know, if I thought we should be doing it, you know, this way and there was no sort of input, um, you were allowed to have a say in it or that. So, so I naturally sort of started stepping up going, no, I think it should be done this way, I, you know, and I... I learnt to, I guess, voice my opinion. Um, and, and then just that sort of followed into, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna put your opinion forward and you believe this is the right way to do it, well, you gotta step up to the plate. You've gotta then start to show that and lead it. You just can't you just can't throw that in and then sit back in the background and go, Well, I'm not gonna do anything about it. Um, so that naturally, I guess, led me more into the sort of leadership roles. And I really don't see that much difference in solving organisational problems as solving, you know, I guess the technical engineering problems. You, you, your processes of how you go about thinking and, and, and coming up with solutions is it's pretty much the same process. It's just you know, different answers, that's all. Solving engineering problems, it's, you soon learn that in complex problems, it's um, it's always a balance. You've got to find this right balance to get the right answer. It's, it's never 100% this is the only solution, this is the only way it can be solved. 
you'll always find if you pick one answer, there's there's a, there's a negative um, or a comp. So you end up with this. You've got to compromise and, and come up with the best one. Dealing with people is very much the same in that respect. You've you've got to find the right way forward with them. You um, you have to learn when to listen to people, um, and you've got to learn when I guess to you know you've got to tell people hey, this is how we're going to do it. So. I guess I do come as a pretty good listener. I, I am perceptive of, you know, when people probably have issues or when people, you know, need to be challenged or they need to be pulled back a bit. Um, it's a matter of just learning to work with the people. And once you start to understand the people around you well enough, you'll, you'll work out what's the right answers then, you know, in in some of these organisational challenges. One of the things that, you know, if I'm going to give advice, it's, it's, not, to, um, it's not to focus on, on the end game as such, uh, but it's really to focus on, and, you know, on what you want to do. And um, it's focus on what you want to do and then, you know, do it well. Do, do it to your best of your ability. Um, and you know, with that, you'll end up finding you'll you'll get to where you want to go. Uh, I think there's too many, there's too much focus today on, you know, I have to be in the CEO role at this point in time. I have to have achieved this. I, ha- I have to have so much money in the bank, or I'm a failure. Um, I haven't succeeded, and uh, I think you know we got to be more careful about how we measure success in this day and age. Um, it's, it's not just about measuring it on some of those materialistic items and um, I think it's really about more following what you want to do and you don't necessarily find that immediately either um, but you know you chase that and then you'll surprise yourself when you look back in you know five or ten years time as to actually what you have achieved and what you've got.